I was thinking about, well, I'm talking about some thoughts about love. Okay, so thoughts about love, love. What is love? Love is a great affection and feeling towards someone else. But what exactly is it, right? Love makes the world go round, right? Of course it does. Love does. From many emotions, uh, love is a foundation. Love is a foundation for jealousy and hatred and um, for revenge and for people fight and they die for love, right? They fight and die in the name of love. So there's a lot... There's a lot to love, and I just wanted to explore some of it. So, first a quote. Che Guevara, che Guevara says that, ironic as it sounds, a true revolutionary has great feelings of love. So, as ironic as it sounds, a true revolutionary has great feelings of love. You want to change the system because you love the people so much that you want to see a better world for them to live in. True revolutionary has great feelings of love. Okay. I've, I've heard people say, I love you, right? I've heard people say this, but they have a, a tone in their voice that when they say, I love you, it's not, they're not actually saying they love you. They're trying to prescribe their love on you. They want you to think that they love you. It's a false generosity, if you know anything about Paula Freire. They want to prescribe that love on you, so that way you say, oh, that person loves me. And then once you think that they love you, they don't have to love you no more. Once they've got it in your brain that you are loved, then love doesn't actually have to be present. If they got your perception, then why do they actually have to have your real love? So that's the thing about love is you can tell somebody you love them until you're blue in the face. You can tell somebody that you love them a million times. But it doesn't matter how many times you tell somebody you love them. It's how many times that they've felt it. How many times have you felt love? That's what true love is. So, and love comes in lots of different perspectives. I, have, I just said true love. And I feel like most, nearly all my, probably all my behavior and motivations for, all my motivations for the behavior that I exhibit is due to love. It's all love. Some of it is intense romantic love for a special significant other. Uh, but others is, you know, friendship love, or pizza love, or um, family love, or uh, love of humanity, or love for another person just because you respect them to be another person. So, love. Let's go to Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster's got several definitions of what love is. They got a noun and a verb. So, love is a noun and a verb. The noun version is there's seven or nine, actually, uh, definitions of it. So, love. Love, strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. So, such as a maternal love for a child. An attraction based on sexual desire. Affection and tenderness felt by lovers. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest. Such as love for his old schoolmates. An assurance of affection. I give her my love. Number two, a warm attachment, enthusiasm, enthusiasm or devotion, love of the sea. Number three, A, the object of attachment, devotion, or admiration. Baseball was his first love. A beloved person, a darling, often used as a term of endearment. British, used as an informal term of address. Hello, love. How you doing, love? Uh, number four, an unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. So, the unselfish, loyal, and benevolent good for the concern of another. Empathy to care about someone else, to actually put yourself in their shoes. So, it's not just to being attached to somebody or admiring them or having common interests as them or having a strong affection to them. But it's literally, you know, empathizing them, getting in their, their, their feet and looking at the world through their eyes. So, just the uh, concern for another person. The fatherly concern of God for humankind, brotherly concern for others, a person's adoration of God, that's love. Five, a God or personification of love. Six, an amorous episode, a love affair. Number seven, the sexual embrace, copulation. Eight, score of zero, as in tennis, or nine, capitalized Christian science, God. 
So God is love. Love is God. And that, I believe that, love is God. Energy is also God. But love, energy, energy is the scientific God. And love is the spiritual human consciousness love. God. Love is a spiritual whatever. Love is God. God is love. So <laughs> loving, loved, transitive as a verb. To love somebody, to hold dear, to cherish them, to feel a lover's passion, devotion, or tenderness for, to caress, to fondle amorously, to copulate with, to like or desire actively, take pleasure in, love to play the violin, to thrive in, the sun, the rose loves the sunlight, to thrive in. So, so love is a noun and an action. And I think actually when love is an action, that's when it matters. We can all be talking theor theories until we're blue in the face. But when you act upon your feelings of love, that's when love becomes real. And some work is love made visible is what the camp in Vermont, <laughs> that was their saying, love is work made visible. And possibly, uh, blind obedience is just a bad idea all around. You have to agree with it. It can't be blind obedience. You have to agree with what you're doing. And uh, obedience versus morality are completely different things. Obedience is you're going to do whatever the other person says regardless of the morals of it. And morality is you are going to do what is right, what is good, what is fair and just, regardless of what anybody else says. So they're the opposite. Morality is listening to your own brain, about your own conscience, about what to do, what to do uh, right and good. And obedience is just doing what someone else says, regardless of morality. So morality is doing what is right and good and just and honest, regardless of what anybody says or tells you to do. That's morality. That's what being moral is. And obedience is just doing what the fuck, you know, just being someone's bitch. And it doesn't matter. They say, go grab that piece of paper. And you go grab it without even thinking about it. You have no concept of morality. You have concept of obedience, but not morality. They're the opposite. So, that's the definitions of love. That's my thoughts about obedience and morality. And actually, when I'm sitting there thinking about it, because I thought that with the love is that you give yourself to that person, but you also maintain, you know, your own self also. So there's an I, and then there's a we, and then there's all of us, right? So there's all of us, there's this oneness that we all are in, then there's this uniqueness, there's this me-ness, and then there's this we-ness. And I think all these, there's a balance between all this. I think they all dance in uh, uh, some sort of rhythmic form. I don't know if they transfer one to the other. If you're thinking of one, you're not thinking of the other because I think they all matter. Right now, I feel loved. I feel like I'm loved right now, and I feel more of a person. I feel more myself than what I felt in a while. And even just me talking about love to the YouTube, I'm creating culture. I'm building up dignity for myself, so I'm showing self-love, but it comes out of being loved myself. So it gives me the confidence that I need in order to uh, express myself. So it's, it, it's a weird dance. So the love of we, you know, there's a we love there. I love, you know, Amal Gali, and she loves me. So, like, since we love each other, then there's this we that we believe that we're together with each other always. But we're also ourselves, too, you know. So it's like we're each other and we're ourselves. Um, so, UrbanDictionary.com, it says that love, it's actually got a really good uh, start here. It's got this box. I can't read exactly what it says, but it says the most spe spectacular, indescribable, deep maybe euphoric feelings for another. Love is an incredibly powerful word. 
to be together. When you're not, you're thinking about being together because you need that person. And without them, your life is incomplete. This love is unconditional affection with no limits or conditions, completely loving somebody. It's when you trust the other person with your life. I do believe in trust. Trust is one of the best virtues you can have in a relationship. So you love somebody and you can trust them. You know, you can trust that they will put themselves in a situation and that they are yours forever, but you also can trust them to make the good decisions in life and not, like, put themselves in harm's way. Um, trust is trust is huge. Trust is way bit better than false generosity. False generosity sucks. Fuck false generosity. But trust is, is, is important. So when you trust the other person with your life and when they... Uh, when you will do anything for each other, when you love somebody that you wanted nothing more than for them to be truly happy no matter what it takes because that's how much you care about them because their needs come before your own. You hide nothing of yourself and can tell the other anything because you know they accept you just the way you are and vice versa. It's when they're the last thing that you think about before you go to sleep and they're the first thing you think of when you wake up. The feeling that warms your heart and leaves you overcome by a feeling of serenity. Love involves wanting to show your affection and or devotion to each other. It's a smile on your face you get when you're thinking about them and you miss them. Love can make you do anything and sacrifice for what will be better in the end. Love is intense and it's passion. Everything seems brighter and happier and more wonderful when you're in love. And if you find it, don't let it go. One word frees us of all the weight and pain of life. And that word is love. Sophocles. So that's Urban Dictionary. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good definition of love. It holds on to you. It grabs a hold of you. You do whatever it takes. You love them. And you just sincerely want them to be happy and to enjoy life. To be satisfied with life. To get what they want out of life. And to be willing to do anything for the, to, to achieve that for them. And by loving others, you know, you, it feels good yourself. So it's it's a selfish thing to love other people. But like Sophocles says, you know, it's the only thing that, you know, what, what do you say? It frees us from the weight and pain of life. That's love. Love, it's nature's way of tricking people into reproducing. <laughs> love, lust is the desire for their body. Love is the desire for their soul. That's a good one. Love is giving someone the power to destroy you and trust in them not to. Love is patient. Love is kind and envies no one. Love is never boastful, nor conceited, nor rude, nor never selfish, not quick to take offense. Love keeps no score of wrongs, does not gloat over another's sin, but delights in the truth. There is nothing love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, its hope, and its endurance. In a word, there are three things that last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. That's 1 Corinthians 13. Truly loving someone means that you care deeply about another person. You care if they screw up their lives as you want them to learn to love themselves. Love doesn't mean life is going to be perfect. It shouldn't be taken lightly. And the word shouldn't be misused if it is used in a romantic way. There would be arguments and misunderstandings, but love means that you will try and get over any hurdles and issues together. True love isn't selfish and can bring people together in a way nothing else can. It's a soul connection, a commitment of the heart, life. Life can tear people apart, but love may bring them back together again. Love should be never uh, should never be taken for granted, although often it is. I've heard actually some parents, and I like this thing. I really do. It's, I always have to love you, okay, child, but I don't always have to like you. <laughs> and I do like that. I always have to love you. i got to care that you live on this planet and that you're surviving, but I don't have to like you. If you're being a dick, if you're being a jerk, I don't have to like that. But then I always felt if someone doesn't like me, then the, if they don't like me as a person, then it's like, fuck you. So, hate the sin, not the sinner, right? Hate the behavior, but not the person. Love. Love, love, love. So uh, Emma Goldman, she was the one that I said that I got from um, about loving each other deeply. When you give yourself to somebody, aren't you being obedient to them? I don't think love is giving somebody anything they want, but if they kick and scream enough and they just, you know, if it's something that doesn't 
you don't lose. Don't you just give it to them just because that's what they want, you know, because they want it so much. They don't own you, but if it's something that you can give and it's not a big deal, why wouldn't you? I don't know. Why wouldn't you give it to them? But you want to be free. You don't initially want obedience. That's not the first thing, but I think it's the end thing. Eventually, it kind of comes in. I don't know.